Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 35. Lesson number 35, day 3035, 3 signifies the fact that we are in the third edition, third edition, day 35, we are on page number 444, or rather 244, please turn to it, on page 244 you will see some inequality problems, and before we jump into those, uh, the inequality problems that we are about to do on page number 244 are simple inequalities, they will appear in the exam as easy and the medium questions. Every once in a while you will encounter on the exam, on the hard section, what are absolute value inequalities. Absolute values, inequalities are a little bit trickier. Do you understand? If you want to practice some more, if you want to get some practice on absolute value inequality, you will find on my channel a separate series of video, a separate series of videos simply, simply titled Basic Math. Just type in Basic Math Day 106, 106 through 110. There are five problems there that are easy one. Basic Math, day 121 through 125, it should say 125, those are medium problems. And finally, the last five, day 165, 161 through 165. If you can tackle these problems, if you can tackle the very last one, the last five problems in absolute value inequalities, then that means that you have arrived, you'll be fine in the exam. But that's not what we're about to do. What we're about to do are simple inequalities. There are no absolute values in here. Very straightforward, very simple. As I said, they typically appear as easy and the medium questions. Let's take a very let's take a look at the very first one. We are on page number 244, example 2.5.1. It's, it's it says minus 3x plus 5 is less than or equal to 17. Now before we jump into it and before we finish the problems. Let me first give you the answer choices here and the answer choices that I'm going to put down here on the blackboard answer choices that are not given in the book there in this question are the same answer choices that appear on page 167 so if you page, turn to page 167 you will see five answer choices the same five answer choices will apply to the four problems that we're going to do right now you understand? here's the first question here are the five answer choices one, two, A, B, C, D and E. Here is your zero. This is our zero in all the choices. This is a number line. A, B, C, D, E. The first answer choice says that it is some value that is less than some positive number. That's what this says. The second answer choice says that it is some value that is greater than some negative value. The third answer choice says it is greater than some positive value. Or greater than or equal to because these are all closed circles. And that's what I meant to say. And the fourth answer choice says that the value that we're looking for is somewhere, it's some, some value between some negative value and some positive value. It's, it's greater than or equal to some greater than or equal to some negative value and less than or equal to some positive value is between these two values. And finally, it says the value that we're looking for has to be such that it is less than or equal to some negative value or greater than or equal to some positive value. Those are the five answer choices. They do not look very pretty because I don't have enough room there and I'm trying to do it in a hurry. But turn to page number 167 and those are the five answer choices that we're dealing with. So if you're presented with something like that in the exam, what can we do here given this inequality? Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. It's very simple as I said, very straightforward. We're going to subtract 5 from both sides because we want to get rid of this 5. Negative 3x is going to come down. Negative 3x is less than or equal to 17 minus 5 is 12. And this is where the parts are going to get tricky. We want to get rid of negative 3. So we need to divide both sides by negative 3. This is where you have to pay attention. This is where a lot of people end up making mistakes. As soon as you multiply or divide an an, an, an in as soon as you multiply or divide an inequality, you must remember to reverse the direction. We must remember to reverse the direction. For example, for example, everybody knows that 5 is less than 6. 
But if you were to multiply both sides by negative 1, both sides by negative 1, the negative 5 is not less than negative 6. Negative 5 is actually greater than negative 6. We must remember to switch the sign. As soon as you multiply or divide an inequality by a negative quantity, we must reverse the direction. That's what we have to do here because we just divided by negative 3. And that's the only tricky part here. That's it. The rest is very simple. The rest is very straightforward. So this, this less than or equal to sign will become greater than or equal to sign. The negative 3 is going to go away. That was the whole idea. And x will find out is greater than or equal to 12 minus negative 3, which is negative 4. x is some value greater than or equal to negative 4. As long as it's greater than or equal to some negative number, as long as it's greater than or equal to some negative number in these answer choices, that's the answer. But right here, that tells us that x is, for, so negative 4 will fall here. And there is your answer, even though the answer choice does not show negative 4. Do you understand? The answer is this. And if you want, we can very quickly verify it. We can very quickly verify it. For example, we are told that x has to be less than or equal to negative, negative 4. Let's put in 0 here. If you put in 0 here, if you put in 0 here, 0 should work because 0 is more than or equal to negative 4. For example, negative 3 times 0 plus a 5, well that's just 5 and 5 is indeed less than, less than or equal to 17. Similarly, if you were to put in negative 5, we are told that x, is, x, is equal, x has to be greater than or equal to negative 4. If you put in negative 5, negative 5 will find out that does not, should not work. Negative 5 we shouldn't say does not work because that's what, want, that's what we want to find out. Negative 5 should not work, will not work. For example, instead of x equal to 0, if you put in negative 5, negative 5 times negative 3 is positive 15, positive 15 and positive 5 is 20, and 20 is not less than 17. You see, we just verified it. Let's do second one. So our answer to this problem was B. We can erase that answer, put it again. And let's do the second problem. The second problem says, this is, this is 2.5.2, 2.5.2 on page number 244. It says, 4x plus 9 over 11 is less than, is less than 5. Let's see what we can do. Well, first thing we got to do is get rid of this 11 here. First thing we have to do is get rid of this 11 here. And we're going to do that by multiplying both sides by 11. But since we're multiplying both sides by a positive quantity, we don't have to worry about switching the direction, so we can do it right here. Had, had, we, been, had we been multiplying by negative 11, I would have done it at the bottom here because we need to switch the direction. So 11 is going to go away, and we end up with 4x plus 9 is less than or equal to 5 times 11 is 55. Is 55. We need to get rid of the 9, subtract 9 from both sides, and we find that 4x has to be less than or le less than, or oh, this is less than, the circles have to be open. The circles have to be open, and since our circles are all closed in the answer choices, I'm going to cheat here, I'm going to change the problem. In the, in the, in the book it says less than, we're going to put down equal sign here, so that we can use these answer choices, because all the circles are closed, you see, all of them are closed, which means it has to be this end point has to be included in it. Okay, For 40, 55 minus 9, how much is 55 minus 9? How do I know? I know 55 minus 10 would have been 45, so therefore 55 minus 9 should be 46. 46. Oh, this is a strange, peculiar answer. I don't like it. Oh, I guess it is 46. Divide both sides by 4. Divide both sides by 4, and x has to be less than or equal to as 46 over 4. I'm going to do it out here so that you can see the work. 46 over 4. How many 4's does 4 have? 4 has 1 4. We're dividing top and bottom by 4. How many 4 does 6 have? 6 has 1 4. After we take away the 4 from the 6, we have a remainder of 2, and that 2 needs to be divided by 4. So it is 11 and 2 4. 11 and 2 4, which is same as saying x is to be less than or equal to 11 and a half. Any value less than or equal to 11 and a half should work. Therefore, if you were to try 11, it should work. We can verify it here. Let's put in 11 here, you'll see that 11 should work. But we found out x has to be less than or equal to 11 and a half. Let's put in 11 here.
Let's see what happens, shall we? So if we put in 11 for x, we have 4 times 11 plus 9 over 11. And that has to be less than 5. That's what we're trying to find out. And then, of course, we can break it up. We can break this up as, or we could have done it here. It's 4. 4 times 11 divided by 11 is just 4. We don't have to make a fuss about it. 4 times 11. 4 times 11 divided by 11 is, 11, is 4. So it is simply 4 and 9 11. And 4 and 9 11 is indeed less than 5. 4 and 9 11 is indeed less than 5. Because it says x has to be less than or equal to 11 and a half. Had we plug in 12, 12 would not have worked. 12 should not work. Let's find out, shall we? Let's plug, put in 12 here. See what happens. If we had put in 12 here, this would have been 48, 48 plus 9, 48 plus 10 is 58, so it would have been 57. And what we what we would have gotten is what we would have gotten is 57 over 11, which is same as 55 plus 2 over 11. And 55 over 11 is 5, so it's 5 and 2 11. And 5 and 2 11 is not less than 5. 5 and 2 11 is actually more than 5. 12 should not work. So the answer here was that as long as x is less than 11 and a half, it should work. 11 and a half. As long as x is less than 11 and a half, which answer do I should we pick here? Well, x is less than 11 and a half, some positive value some positive value and it has to be less than that. The answer is A. The answer is A. We're going to do two more problems. Two more problems that are not in the book. These are bonus problems that I'm going to put on the blackboard. Don't try to find them in the book. They are not there. We're going to call them 2.5.3. Now what I want you to do is pause the video as soon as I put the problem on the blackboard because for these two problems that, we are about to, that I'm about to give you you don't have the answers because you know, they're not in the book. Pause the video, do the problems yourself. Once you have solved the problem then continue and then co compare your work against the work that we will do together. Okay, here's the first one, 11.5.3. 11.5.3 says, 2 minus 5x has to be greater than or equal to 6x minus 5. I have to remember to insert, I have to keep remembering insert this equal to sign because of the fact that all the, all the circles are closed otherwise we have to open them. That's it, work on it your, on your own, pause the video, pause the video right now, I'm going to get out of your way, I'll give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video and do the problems yourself. Well the very first thing we need to do here is to get rid of this negative 4 that appears at the bottom. This bloody negative 4, we got to get rid of it. We have to get rid of it. We're going to multiply both sides by negative 4. And since we are about to multiply both sides of the inequality by negative 4, we're not going to do it here, right here. We're going to do it in the next step because we need to remember to switch the direction. So we have negative 4 times 2 minus 5x. And here we have 6x minus 5 over negative 4 times negative 4 so that we can get rid of the negative 4 but we must remember to switch the direction it says greater than or equal to it should become less than or equal to and now we are home free rest is downhill rest is downhill so negative 4 times 2 is negative 8 negative 4 times negative 5 would have been positive 20 positive 20x less than or equal to 6x minus 5 Bring your x's to this side, bring your numbers to that side, constant to the other side, that's it. So let's subtract 6x six, six from both sides. And let's add 8 to both sides. And we're done, almost. So negative 8 will kill the positive 8, that was the whole idea. And positive 6x six will be killed by the negative 6x, that was the whole idea. Okay, what are we left with? Well, 20, 20 minus 6 is 14, so we have 14x is less than or equal to negative 5 and a positive 8 is going to give you 3 x has to be less than or equal to 3 14 oh, that's a very strange and peculiar answer but I guess that is the answer x is has to be less than or equal to 3 14 3 14 so what's the answer here x has to be less than some positive value x has to be less than some positive value 
Where is it? Oh, same as, same as before. Right here. A would be the answer. The answer choice would be A. We could verify it. We could very easily verify it. It says X has to be less than 3 14. If X has to be less than or equal to 3 14, which means if we were to try 7 14, it should not work. Because 7 14 is not less than 3 14. X has to be less than 3 14. Let's put in 7 14 and see whether or not it works. We need the room. Where can we do it? We have no choice but to do it here. I'm going to put it right here. So we're going to put in 7 14. 2 minus 5x, 7 14, which is half. Less than or equal to, this negative 4 should go away. 6 times half minus 5. Now we are putting in half because half represents the 17 14 and 7 14 rather than 7 14 should not work as we already said repeatedly. Okay, 2 minus 5 halves, 5 halves is negative 2 halves, 2 minus negative 2 halves is negative half and here we have 3 minus 5 which is negative 2. This 6 times half is 3, 3 minus 5 is 3 minus half, 3 minus 3 minus 5 is negative 2 and negative half is indeed more than negative so something has gone wrong I made a mistake here what did what go, what went wrong oh because we haven't switched the sign negative half Give me one second, okay? Did I miss something in the problem? Yes, there is a negative 4 underneath it. I should not have gotten rid of it. There is a negative 4 underneath it. This has a negative 4 underneath it. This is getting to be too crowded. I'm going to erase all of this thing. It has a negative 4 underneath it. So here we have 2, two minus 5 halves. 2 minus 5 halves are negative half. And let's see what we get here. This is 3. 3 minus 5 is negative, negative 2 over negative 4. Negative 2 over negative 4 is half. And negative half is not, not greater than positive half. Negative half is not greater than positive half. As we already said before, 7 half should not work. Because we, we already determined that x has to be more than or equal to, x has to be less than or equal to rather, 3 14. Therefore 7, 7 14 would not work. x has to be less than 3 14. We put in 7 14 and 7 14 does not work. Let's do one more. 3.5.4. Again, I'm going to put the black problem on the blackboard. You do it. Three, 3 minus 7x. We are told is less than or equal to 2x minus 3 over or negative 2. Yeah, again, I'll give you a second to pause to be able to, for, for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself first. Well, let's multiply both sides by negative two, so we can get rid of this negative two right here. So we have negative two times three minus seven x, and here we're going to have two x minus three. We're going to multiply both sides by negative two. This negative two is going to cancel out. I'm not going to show it because I don't have the room. But what we, what we have to remember is that this is a less than or equal to sign. Now it becomes greater than or equal to sign because we have moved this negative 2 to this side. From the denominator of this side to the numerator here. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 2 times negative 7 is positive 14. x has to be greater than or equal to 2x minus 3. Let's bring 2x to this side. And let's bring 6 to the other side. Very simple, very straightforward. A negative 6, a negative 6, and a positive 6 are going to kill each other. A positive 2x and a negative 2x are going to kill each other. And what are we left with? We're left with 7, 14 minus 2, which is 12x. Has to be greater than or equal to negative 3, and a positive 6 is going to give us 3. And therefore, x has to be greater than or equal to 1 quarter. 3 over 12. x has to be greater than or equal to one quarter. This has to be greater than some positive value. X has to be greater than positive value. 
In that case, the answer choice would be C. Mm -hmm. Now the answer is C, because X is greater than some positive value right here. So this this closed circle here would represent one quarter, even though it's not here, but that's what it represents. And as long as it's greater than or equal to one quarter, it, it's fine. X has to be greater than one quarter. Let's plug in something to see let's, to see what happens. Uh, we are told that x has to be, the way it works out, it says that x has to be greater than one quarter. Which tells us that if we were to put in zero here, zero should not work because zero is not greater than one quarter. Let's put in zero because zero is very easy to deal with and see what happens, shall we? Remember that there's a negative two at the bottom here. I made a mistake last time, we're not going to do it again. We need the room so I'm going to erase everything here. I'm going to put in zero here to show that the zero should not work. If you put in one here, one should work. One should work. Zero should not work. If you put in zero here, this is just 3 minus 7 times 0, and this is 2 times 0 minus 3 over negative 2, and 7 times 0 is just 0, so it's just 3 here, 2 times 0 is 0, negative 2 times negative, negative 2 over negative, negative 3 over negative 2 is 1 and a half, and we are told here, what we're claiming here is that 3 is less than or equal to 1 and a half. 3 is not less than or equal, 3 is not less than 1 and a half, it does not work, 0 should not work. Had we plugged in 1, 1 should have worked. Because what we are claiming here, what we are claiming here is that x has to be greater than or equal to a quarter. Well, if x has to be greater than or equal to a quarter, 1 should work. Let's find out, shall we? As you can see, 0 does not work. If you plug in 0, it does not work. Let's try 1. 1 should work. 1 should work. 3 minus 7 times 1. And here we have 2 times 1 minus 3 over negative 2. 3 times 7. 3, 3 minus 7 times negative, 3 minus 7 times 1 is just negative 4. And here we have 2 minus 3, which is negative 1, over negative 2, which is a half. And here we have negative 4, and negative 4 is indeed, negative 4 is indeed less than half. It works. The value of x being 1 should do the job. x, if we were to claim that is equal to 0, should not work, because x has to be more than a quarter. That was the end of it. In the next video, which is going to be a very long video, where we will discuss the topic of function uh, in detail. And we're going to do all the problems that you see there and, and, and few more uh, in the next video. But be ready for it. It's going to be a little bit longer. Okay? Bye now.